Hello, today we're going to be looking at property of number type of questions. What you'll typically be given is some input values and information about them, a function relating those input values, and you have to say something about the output. In terms of a general strategy for these kind of questions, firstly, make sure you read the question carefully and you're very clear, particularly on what answer is expected so that you don't waste your time, for example, trying to calculate something when all you need to say is whether it's positive or negative. Breaking it down, in the input, uh, make sure you understand any technical terms used uh, so you understand what kind of numbers are allowed in this question. In the function, read it out loud to yourself, so read A times B just to help you focus on what the question is asking. And uh, always check the potential answers to uh, be clear on what type of answer is being required. The second step is to try some trial values. Draw some rough tables and put in some values for X and Y or A and B that meet the conditions. Calculate the function and cross off any answer options that contradict your trial values. Finally, look for a general rule or pattern and being solid on your maths facts will really help you at this point. Let's try a question. Suppose x, y and z are consecutive integers. What is x plus y plus z? Consecutive means they come one after another and integers mean that they are natural counting numbers. The most important thing to understand when you see an expression like what is x plus y plus z is that uh, the answer has to be true for any legal value of x and y and z. Um, so if we try some trial values, um, simplest x, y and z that are consecutive counting numbers would be 1, 2, 3. x plus y plus z is 6. Um, we can try another set of consecutive integers, 5, 6 and 7, and they add up to 18. Now, those values don't appear on the answer option, so we can immediately rule out every answer that uh, doesn't, uh, that contradicts our trial values, and we can jump to the answer being that it cannot be determined. Let's try another question. If x is a prime number greater than 2 and y is odd, what is x times y? A prime number is 1 that cannot be divided with a whole number answer by anything other than 1 in it and itself. Um, let's jump straight into some trial values. So um, the uh, important thing about prime numbers is that uh, 2 is in fact the only even prime number because any other prime number would, any other even number would be divisible by 2 and hence not a prime. Um, let's try first uh, the smallest prime number greater than 2, which is 3, and let's try y is equal to 3, which is odd, and then x times y is 9. We can straight away cross off several of the answer options, because um, for these values, for these legal and acceptable values, x times y is not prime, is not negative, and is not even. Um, I wanted to do some more trial values, so I thought, what are the other prime numbers? Uh, 3, 5, 7, 11, these are all prime numbers. Um, but I'm actually starting to see a pattern already, so I'm going to jump straight onto step 3, and I'm going to say that x must be odd, because the only even prime number is 2, and we know that x is not 2, and y must be odd. So x times y must be odd, hence the answer is odd. Finally, question 3. Given that a, which is less than b, and b is less than 0, and given that d is bigger than 0 and e is bigger than d, solve a times b times e divided by d. Let's jump straight into some trial values. Uh, there's no need to pick complicated numbers. Choose the simplest numbers that meet your conditions. So here I'm trying a is minus 2, b is minus 1, d is 1, e is 2. So a times b makes 2, times it by e makes 4, and divided by d makes 4 again. Straight away I can rule out half of the possible answers, because this number is not negative and it's not odd. So let's try another set of trial values. Suppose a is minus 10, b is minus 1, so then a times b is 10, and then suppose 
D is 2 and E is 5. So A times B times E is 50 and I divide it by D, it makes 25. So I know that the answer also can't be odd. So now I need to find out if this number is always going to be positive or if I can't or negative. Now in terms of a number pattern, I know that um, A and B are going to be uh, negative in the sense that they're less than zero. And if I multiply a negative number by a negative number, I'm going to get a positive number. Now D and E have to be positive because they're bigger than zero. So if I multiply a positive number by a positive number, I'm going to get a positive number again. So I know for sure that A times B times E is going to be positive. Now D is also positive, and there's nothing complicated about this. A positive divided by a positive is still going to be a positive. So I can definitely commit to the answer being positive. So just to recap, the approach is firstly, read the question. Secondly, do some trial values. And finally, look for a general rule.